Today, May 17, is the International Day Against Homophobia, Biphobia and Transphobia, or Ida Hobbit. A day meant to raise the awareness of violence, discrimination and repression of LGBTQ communities worldwide. But also a day that provides an opportunity to take action to address these challenges. Many of us may not know this, but Ida Hobbit has special significance for WHO. It was on May 17, 1990, that WHO took a long overdue step, removing homosexuality as a mental disorder from the international classification of diseases. 15 years later, on May 17, 2005, the first International Day Against Homophobia was marked in several countries. In 2009, transphobia was added to the campaign's name and biphobia in 2015. The longer acronym reflects the ongoing need to promote diversity and safeguard the fundamental human rights of all individuals, irrespective of sexual orientation, gender identity or expression and sex characteristics, what we call in technical terms S-O-G-I-E-S-E. -E. But behind all these acronyms are real lives, real people, including members of our own families and people we cherish as friends and colleagues. In 2023, as I share these thoughts from Denmark, one of the most open societies in the world, it's easy to forget that for millions of LGBTQ persons elsewhere, including many countries in our own European region, stigma and discrimination, persecution and exclusion remain all too real. These challenges impact mental and physical health and well-being, undermining WHO's aspiration to achieve health for all. Let me share just one sobering example. A 2020 study, just three years ago, focused on nearly 2,000 adolescents, average age 15, from 27 randomly selected schools in six European countries. 11% of them were classified as sexual minority youth. When compared to their heterosexual peers, LGBTQ youths were far more exposed to substance abuse, bullying and school-related stress. They displayed both significantly higher suicidal thoughts and actual suicide attempts. The study clearly linked sexual minority status with persistent, serious suicidal ideation. Other studies have shown much the same, both in our region and globally. While we must acknowledge we have a long way to go, let us also celebrate how far we have come in achieving rights and choices for all. Despite very real challenges, we are in a far better place today than even a generation ago. So let us use Ida Hobby today to celebrate the human spirit and the very real triumphs that LGBTIQ individuals and communities have achieved. Let's ask ourselves what all of us can do to contribute to empathy and understanding. Let's also introspect and examine biases that may be preventing us from reaching out to our fellow human beings. The noted journalist and author Ronan Farrow says, and I quote, LGBTQ people are some of the bravest and most potent change agents and leaders I have encountered and the most forceful defenders 
of the vulnerable and voiceless, because they know what it is like to be there." Unquote. As the region director of WHO Europe and Central Asia, I pledge that we will continue advocating for the rights, health and well-being of the LGBTQ persons across our office and across our region today and always. Thank you.